Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome back to the Steinberg Halion 7 tutorial series. One of the big problems that we have with samples is that they're audio files. And so once they've finished playing, however long that audio is, they're done. When you press um, an oscillator synthesizer down, you can hold that key pretty much forever and you'll get a consistent sound. Today we're going to have a look at how we can loop samples to make them imitate that kind of behavior and give us an effectively indefinite sound from a finite audio source. If you're enjoying this series so far and you'd like to help support my channel, check out the Patreon and YouTube channel member links below. Awesome way to do it. Okay, I've got an initialized sample layer. I'm gonna pick up this rock and nut melody sample and drop it into the editor. Now I'm going to stick in a normal playback mode today, jump straight over to the sample page and let's zoom out. This is the entire sample. Okay, that's what we have to play with today. The first thing that I'm going to do is select one part out of this sample, switch to bars and beats mode. We see this is a four bar sample. And I really am only interested in this part of the sample that's played over bar three. I wanna turn that into as close to a synth sound as I can get. That's my, my play pit for today. And the first thing that we need to do is adjust our sample start and end markers to wrap themselves around that bar. So here's sample start. Let's move that somewhere around the beginning of this sample. And here's sample end. And I want it to stop before this next chord plays. Okay, that's what we've got so far. Now I want to zoom into this bar so that I can see it a little bit more clearly. I'm just gonna select it. It doesn't matter if your range markers are slightly outside. That's fine for today's purposes. And then we're gonna click zoom to selection or loop or sample range. All of those are interesting today. Click that button. And then having done that, I'm gonna disengage auto scroll. So now we're locked in this view. And we can just see our sample a little bit clearer. Now I want to select a section of this sample to loop around when I hold the key down. I'm just gonna zoom out temporarily so that we can see the entire thing again and tab over to the loop page. At the moment, there is no loop. We want to sustain loop. And as you can see, it says no loop. I'm gonna create a loop by setting it into continuous mode. And the moment I do, new loop markers appear. This is why I've zoomed out again because I knew these were gonna appear at bar number one. The easiest thing to do is to set your loop start and end to the same markers as your sample start and end. That's really easy to do. You can right click on the sample and in the loop options, you can say set the sustain loop to sample start and end. And now the green markers have jumped to where we want them to be and we can zoom back in. Now when I press a key, not a particularly good loop yet, let's improve it a little bit. I'm going to leave this little bit of trailing click as part of the character of the sound but I certainly don't want that to happen every time we loop around. So let's move the loop marker somewhere inside, past the transient. Now, obviously you can see as this sample goes, it gets quieter and quieter. So the bigger this loop is, the more difficult we're going to have connecting the beginning to the end. So I'm gonna visually select an area of the sample that looks reasonably stable. This looks like a fairly consistent part of the sample. Let's see what that sounds like. You see, we never got to the sample end now. We'll worry about that later. Okay, we've got a click there. Now, part of that is because I've just realized snap to zero crossing is off. Let's just move these loop markers so that it's actually finding a zero mark, a zero point. It's still gonna click but it's less, it's less clicky now. I really should have turned that on at the beginning of the video. I, I never have it disabled. That's pretty good. The next thing that we can do is introduce crossfade. I'm gonna click this little E that says edit loop. And now the sample viewer is representing the sample in a quite different way. I'm gonna zoom out again so that you can see this a little bit more clearly. It's effectively giving you a virtual representation 
of what it is for this loop to extend off into infinity. It's basically just visually representing this loop, repeating over and over again. It's not actually done that behind the scenes. Obviously, this is all non-destructive editing, but it's just giving you a visual, rep visual representation of what this loop looks like. Now that we're in loop mode, we can edit our crossfade more easily and click this X button, show resulting loop crossfade. And now I can pick up these little white anchors. They indicate the beginning and end of the loop crossfade. I'm going to start dragging these. Now this is far and away the best way to edit your crossfade. You can do it manually from that inside this box, but you can see that the numbers are huge just by moving this tiny little bit. This is 1,417 samples. Of course, there are over 40,000 samples per second. You're dealing with massive numbers. So it's much easier just to pick up these anchors and move them. Let's hear what that's doing to those clicks as we introduce this very small fade. definitely improving. You're not going to do anything about that pulse because obviously it's jumping back to an arbitrary point. This sample was never designed to be looped and so it's an organic evolving sound. It's going to be very very difficult to make that heartbeat effect disappear completely. What we're trying to make it is not be jarring, not, not to do any clicks or nasty pops. And we effectively get something approaching kind of tremolo effect as we move the loop backwards and forwards, the heartbeat of this pulse is effectively acting like a tremolo because it's primarily changes in amplitude that we're hearing as the loop cycles around. Another way that we can try to implement looping, which is very often successful, particularly with toneful sounds like this, is to alternate backwards and forwards. Let's see what this sounds like. So it's actually playing the sample backwards half the time now. And as I say, that can very often be very successful particularly with pad sounds, it actually doesn't matter so much whether the wave is playing forwards or backwards. And obviously you're going to get this mirror effect rather than it jumping backwards in time and start playing an arbitrarily new point. It's basically just waving, washing backwards and forwards. And the crossfade is now just smoothing those transitions. Inevitably going to be a little bit more artificial because half the time it's playing the wave backwards and it's very much a salt to taste. The individual sample is going to determine which one of these approaches works better. Now, rather than setting these loop points manually, we can use transition detection inside Halion. These arrows, we've got find previous loop start and next loop start, and then the same for loop end, previous and next. We have this quality marker, which defaults to seven. And this is basically, it's going to look for transition points in the loop, appropriate points where Halion thinks this sample can be effectively looped. Now the algorithm is, itself isn't actually defined. So it's one of those things that you basically just have to set different quality thresholds anywhere between one and 10 is your range to play with. I find six, seven, eight often works pretty well. Now if I start clicking these backwards and forwards buttons, you'll see the loop markers jump to arbitrary points and they very often do find loop markers that work quite successfully. So rather than you moving it manually, Halion is now looking for similarities in the wave with which it can assign these loop markers. And that's worked pretty well as well. So lots of different approaches that you can use to accomplish the same task. You're really just trying to find decent places where these loop markers can sit that it doesn't sound unnatural or jarring. You've got two different quality transition effects to try. The lowercase t stands for transition, and that's generally the one that will work best. Again, it's finding rhythmic 
markers in the in the sample that it's going to be able to hang off. T is for timbre, which means it's basically going to do a frequency analysis of the tone rather than rhythmic pulses that it's looking for in transition mode. It'll look for frequency-based similarities in the sound. The default is lowercase t for transition and will work perfectly well in the majority of situations. Generally speaking, if you're looping, it's more common to be looking for rhythmic pulses rather than frequency-based ones. Okay, so that's our sustain loop set up. Now what are we going to do when we let the key go? Well, for starters, we need a release cycle. At the moment, this sound doesn't have one. So I'm going to jump back over to my envelope section. I'm going to introduce a release. A bit longer. There we go. Back over to the sample. I zoom out. Now at the moment we're never going to get to that release cycle because the sustain loop is grabbing the sound and we'll do that and only that forever. It's in permanent alternate mode. But we need to tell Hallian's sustain loop to let go of the sample when we release the key. So alternate until release is gonna do that. So as soon as I let the key go, the sustain loop will stop doing its thing, it will stop alternating, and it'll pass responsibility over to the release envelope that will operate according to whatever its criteria are. Now at the moment we can't see the release loop because we're in sustain mode. If I click this little sus button, now we can see the release loop. If I come out of edit mode completely, this is probably the more intuitive view of the sample. You can see behind the scenes the entire sample and you can also see both loops. So we've already set our sustain loop now let's set the release loop to break out of the sustain loop and play until the sample end. Let's see what that looks like. So there's the sustain loop doing its thing. And when I let the key go, we enter the release loop and it spins around. Actually, it's in continuous. I meant it to be in alternate mode. So we just created a really nice organic synth based sound that's going to work really well. For playing this sound as if it was an oscillating synth. Now for each sample you can create two different loop sets. What we've just defined there is loop set A. Let's switch over to B. And now we can redefine new sustain and release loops. Let's jump back to sustain mode, set the sustain loop to sample start and end. And we'll basically just choose different part of the sample to play with. This time we'll have the release loop start at the same point, but end at the end of the sample. Again, we need to alternate until release so that the release cycle has something to do. And this time we'll just have a once effect. So this means the release loop will only loop round once. It will loop round once. It's not the same as no loop, but it won't do it infinitely. Just making my release a little bit longer. It wasn't quite big enough for the demo. Here's the loop, clicky, nasty, unedited, sustain loop. Let go, cycle round cycles once and then the release loop doesn't cycle permanently it only cycles once that'll do us for today hope you enjoyed the episode please hit like if you did i'll see you next time thanks very much